So now that we've been able to set up custom CSS, we're gonna take the next step and actually embed a custom form into VoiceFlow. So this is going to make things like collecting your name, email, phone number, any other information a lot easier. And the way that we're going to do this is by using a feature called extensions. Now, this is one of the most powerful features in VoiceFlow and the, for the web chat, and it allows you to render things like forms, file upload, airline seat pickers, payment modals, authentication, logins, whatever you want to be able to do natively inside of VoiceFlow. Now, rather than give you this out of the box, there is a bit of code involved, so we're going to walk through how to do that. But this way gives you the maximum flexibility to fully customize this embedded element in any way that you want. So first off, we're going to go to our documentation again. So Webflow or the web chat documentation, and we're going to go to custom forms and extensions. So you can see here, this gives you an overview of the extensions capabilities. So in this little GIF, you see that we're doing a calendar picker. We've got things like confetti. So being able to actually trigger actions on the page, as well as things like forms that allow you to actually capture information and pass it over to VoiceFlow. So I'm going to walk you through how to do this. Now, there's different types of extensions. There's something called a response extension that is rendering a response in VoiceFlow and an effect which actually triggers something else on your page. So once you get the hang of this, you can actually start doing things like deep linking in your page, opening up modals, all different sorts of stuff. But we're going to walk through the example of a custom form. So we're just going to follow this step by step and I'll show you how it all works. So the first thing you need to do is create the extension. Now we've got an example extension here for you, which is the same one that you see in this image. You can create your own. We also have a GitHub repository up here with a bunch of different examples, specifically the ones that are shown in here. We're also going to add these to the marketplace. So it'll be a lot easier to be able to find and access, but the method to install them is going to be the same. So the first thing we want to do is actually add this extension to our website. So the extension is a chunk of code and we're going to trigger that code in our agent to actually appear. So this is the code for the custom form. And you can see that it's got the script tags already. So right at the bottom, the script tag. And now in this actual code is basically everything we need. So it's saying this is a response extension. We're going to trigger when we see a step on VoiceFlow called custom form. And then we are going to render the actual form. Here's all the formatting HTML. Here's what I'm collecting, email, name, phone number. And then here's you know just some other checks to make sure that the email is valid, name is valid, everything is filled out. So I'm just going to take this and copy it. So we're going to go back to our website and we're going to add that extension right above where we have our chat widget. So again, let's go into the code right before the body tag. And we can see that our widget is here and we can see all the CSS that we had just added to it. And so now I'm going to actually just drop this right above it. Great. So you can see that it's in here. The script tags are required because this is actually going to make it run on the website and, and actually generate the extension. So the next step is to actually add in a piece of code in our widget that says, whenever you see a step, I want you to trigger this extension that we've now added to the website. So going back to our documentation, looking at step two here, modify the chat widget code. You can see that we just need to add under assistance. So we added this in the last video when we added in the CSS customization. We just need to add a line called extensions and then the name of the extension, which is form extension. So you'll remember the name from up here, it's called form extension. So back in our widget. Let's go find it. Cool. We can see assistant style sheet. So we're just going to add it underneath the style sheet. So there's a comma here, which is what we need. And so let's just hit enter and paste in extensions. Now I don't want the CSS to clash. So let me just get rid of this style sheet by commenting it out. So now this should be ready to go. And what we need to do is that I'm going to save this and we're going to do the third step, which is actually triggering um, the extension with a custom action. Now, a custom action is a custom step in VoiceFlow, and it allows you to send a specific message to the web chat to say, hey, you know, here's an item that I want you to, to trigger. And so in this case, we are going to use the name custom form, and that's going to trigger our extension. Because if you remember on our extension, right up here at the top, um, it says whenever you see a step or a trace type called custom form, we want you to trigger this extension. So let's go to VoiceFlow and the custom action step is in the developer steps. It's called custom action. And if you drag it out, it looks like this. It's almost like a make your own step. So for the name, we're going to call it custom form. And I'm just going to follow the instructions here because it looks like this extension is actually passing back a message. It's going to pass back information. So I want to have a response called response underscore submitted. So let's just write that in. 
Now, the way that the custom action works is that whenever this is step is hit in your project or in your agent, it's going to send a message to your web chat. Um, not the, nothing that the user sees, it just sends it all in the back end. And it's going to have a trace type, which is this name. And then it's going to actually pass a payload here. So for the case of the form, we don't need any payloads. But if you're using an extension that maybe renders a calendar link, that's where you would want to include a calendar link with it. But that's for a different video. And we'll be able to try and include some more extensions that you can use to give you a better sense of what you can do with this. So I've created the response submitted path. And the last thing I want to do here is actually check stop on action. Because this is going to force the web chat to stop on this step until it receives a response from my form, which is going to make it go down the response submitted path. So let's add this into our web chat and actually see if it works. So we're just going to add it right at the front, and then we're going to go through and actually add it into our book a lead flow or book a demo flow to see what that looks like. Great. So it's in here. Let's hit publish. So we'll say V3. And while that's publishing, let's go and deploy our website. Okay, so that's deployed. Let's open it up. And we can see our widget is here on the bottom. Let's start a conversation. I just have to restart it because it still has the memory from the last one. Start a new chat. We can see that our form came up. So we've got a name field. Let's type in Daniel. Email is test at voiceflow.com. And phone number is 123 456. And let's hit submit. And awesome. So you can see that that actually moved over to the next part of our agent. So now that we know that the form works, let's add it into our book a demo flow. And we're going to actually show you how to capture back that information in VoiceFlow. So going back to our agent now, we know that this works. So let's just go ahead and copy this block, reconnect our start step here, and we'll go to our book a demo. So now what we can do is let's modify up this flow so we don't need to necessarily capture their name anymore because we're going to get it all within a specific part. Let's add in our form step here. And so the form step is going to give us their name, their email, and their information. We still want to use this email classifier, so let's just move these blocks down. And we can move this whole thing over. So let's just disconnect this part, and we'll submit our form to this step. And just in case someone doesn't give us their email, we still want to do this whole validation step. And so we are going to maybe just link it up here. So certainly we can get to the sale team, what's your work email, so we can remove this step. Make it like this. Maybe actually attach it to the bottom here and then resubmit back to the check. Okay, a little messy, but if this is working for now, I could even move it underneath. Great, that looks a bit better. So now what we want to do is figure out how do we capture back the information that we submitted into the form. So if we head over to our documentation, you can see that to do this, we actually are going to use a JavaScript step. And that all the information from the form is actually stored in this thing called last event and then the payload. So when we submit a form, a payload is sent back to VoiceFlow, and it's in this in the form of this last event. So let's just go ahead and add this in. So we're going to say last underscore event dot payload dot name is going to be name, and this is going to be our variable name. So this is the variable we have in VoiceFlow, and let's just check what's the email. And the email is captured to email, so we'll do the same thing here. We'll say email equals last underscore event dot payload dot email. And then the last one is phone number. So I don't actually think I have a variable for this yet. So before you can use a variable in the JavaScript step, you need to create it in VoiceFlow. So let's just go ahead quickly and put in a variable called uh, phone underscore number. So we're going to add phone number as a variable here. We're going to create that. Now we can use it in our JavaScript steps. So the last one is going to be phone underscore number equals. And let's just see what it looks like in the actual code here. Sweet. So in the in the extension, it's just called phone. So it's going to be last event dot payload. So now this should work, and it should actually take out all the information and store it in variables. So what we're going to do to just check this and make sure this is actually working is we're going to put it. We're just going to attach this here. And we'll just print out our variables to make sure that it's working. So we're just going to go ahead now and add in our variables. So phone number, name, and email. Great. So this will hopefully work now. Let's hit publish. If not, we can go and debug it to see what's up. So we don't need to do anything else on the website because the code's already in there, the extension in there. All we did is update the project. So now let's just go right to our agent here. 
restart the conversation. Great. And so you can see it's updated. Let's do the book of demo flow. Okay, so now we've got our form. So we're going to put Daniel D'Souza. Email is going to be test at voiceflow. Phone number is going to be 647-123-1234. Submit. And you can see that all of our variables were saved. And so it was able to get the name, the uh, phone number, the email, and then continue through our flow. And what's great too is it actually used our email validation. So let's try this form again. But now we're going to maybe put in a broken email or something like that to see what it looks like. So book a demo. We're going to put Dan D'Souza. Email is going to be daniel at gmail.com. And phone number is going to be one, two, three. So it captured Gmail. And you can see that it's going through my loop of valid work email. What is your work email? So there you have it. We were able to actually embed a custom form in VoiceFlow. And because you have access to the code, this lets you go ahead and do things like even add validation. So you can add regex to the email field to make sure it matches a certain format to the phone number field to make sure it's a certain number of digits. So this gives you real max flexibility over how to use some of these things. It's a little bit of extra overhead, but it gives you full control over what this form looks like, feels like, works, and you can capture all that information back in VoiceFlow and continue on with your assistant. So now let's head on to the next step and final step, which is just showing you how to do things like open your widget after six seconds, all of which you should be familiar with by now, but we'll just make it super easy.